G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Now today I'm adding to my pin cushion collection and I'm bringing you a gorgeous snail. Now this is a really basic pattern, but it is so impressive. I can't even tell you how simple it is and even better how quick it is. So he's a racing snail. Um, but it's not slow at all and not tedious. You could put it together in a couple of hours. Everybody who's doing craft markets and selling online, I really recommend this one because there's so many ways that you can embellish this one. So it is a dream pattern for somebody who likes to do beading and embroidery and I've given you a great base pattern. And that, speaking of that pattern, it is free and it's in your description box below. You just need to find that pattern link. You'll be able to print out those pattern templates on your own home printer. When you go to do that, it's best to set your printer to, printing, to be printing at actual size um, or perhaps A4 or in letter. It does depend on your printer and what I do is give you a measuring bar on the on every page so you'll be able to check check that you're printing it out at the right size just in case you need to make any adjustments. If you have any printing problems at all just speak to me in the comments and we'll sort that out for you. So who's ready to make my beautiful snail? Let's have a look at our materials and requirements to make our little patchwork snail. Now I am making him up in fairly um, natural sort of colours. I did toy with the idea of making it in very colourful brights. I'm going to leave that to all of you. Um, you certainly can make this very storybook in style. I'm just going with some warm browns and some deep olive greens. And I have a lovely olive green for the main body part of my snail. Now these are your side body pieces. They are cut from felt, which has fusible woven interfacing applied. And make sure you transfer your marks as you go. So you've got your two pieces there and then you have a body base which is going to come up and it's going to be a little bit visible at the front and it's nice to use a different color. So I'm just using that nice warm tan. Again, make sure that you transfer all of your markings and on this one, the little spot there, put it on the right side of your fabric. That's going to show us where we attach our shell. It's just a good spot for marking and get that shell in exactly the right place. That one also has a fusible woven interfacing applied. And then we're going to have our shell pieces. This is just so easy to put together. So your shell pieces, you cut the base part of your three shell pieces, you cut your base parts out of the same felt with the interfacing applied. And again, make sure you transfer your marks. Put your marks on the outside because these are, are not going to be seen. They're going to be sitting up against your snail. So we've got our large one, medium one, and our small. And I do that all in the same colored felt. And again, it's a contrast to what I've used here on the body. Yours might be bright fluoro pink and lime green. And I certainly hope you do play with the colors. It will look absolutely amazing. So now for your top shell pieces, this is where we get to play with a bit of color and you have your little donut pieces, which are going to be going on top. So I've got a, a lovely paisley brown there for that one. That these fabric pieces are also interfaced with that same interfacing. Then we're gonna go for a little leaf pattern there that's gonna be there. And then the final one, a lighter one for the top. So that will be my little combination there. Once we put them all together, you're going to need two buttons, one, a larger button. It's probably about 25 millimeters for the base. We're going to pull this all through to the base and then one for the top of the shell. And I like to use a shank button for this because you get that lovely rounded top. I just happen to have exactly the right one for that and that will finish that off beautifully. My snail is going to be very unadorned. There's not going to be any extra um, on him at all, but this is a pattern that you can really play with. All of you who love to do embroidery, you can do all sorts of embroidery down the side here. Remember to use, you can use your metallic threads for the base if you want to give that silvery sort of a look. We are going to need some pearl thread because we're going to sew in that base section. 
with a blanket stitch by hand. Um, mine is an eight ply. Now for, for his little antenna eyes, his little eye stalks, I'm actually using a cut bobby pin because it's really such a great shape and it's already got um, the little bonded ends there. So I just snipped the curve part off of my bobby pins. I just cut the curve off at the bottom and it gives me two pieces. One side is usually crimped and one side is straight. You could use either, but I'm actually going to use the straight side. And we're going to be bending the ends because they're going to be tucking in. We're going to hot glue them into place. Now you can use them absolutely plain like that because they come in quite a few different colors. Or alternatively, you can wrap them and you can wrap them with some thread to make them a little thicker like I have here. So I've got, move those out of the way so you can see that. So it's thread wrapped with my pearl thread to make it thicker at the base and tapering up. It's a little bit of extra work. It's not difficult by any means, um, but it does give me that that little bit more realism to those little eyes. Now, we don't add eyes because these are snail's eyes at the top here. You can add a little smile on the face when we get to there if you like. And the other ideas for making your little eye stalks can be perhaps just some wire. You can create some twisted wire. You can always add beads on the end if you really wanna take it a little bit further. Another thing that you can use for your eye stalks, this is actually the little metal piece from an alligator clip. You've all seen those little um, bag style paper clips that open out and they've got two of these in them. This is perfect for adding eyes because you can actually this is the wrong size, you'll need to size up a little, but it will just fold over and then you'll have the two little eye stalks coming up. So that's just another idea if you can find them. Those clips in a bigger size, I haven't got a clip to show you or I would. We're also going to need a bit of clear craft glue and we're filling with polyester filling. You will need a long doll needle to put this one together at the end and Definitely, if you have a wool felting needle, grab that. That's going to be really useful. So all in all, very, very simple to put together. So let's get started. Move those little eye stalks out the way. And we're going to start at the beginning, which is with our two side body pieces. We're going to put right sides together. You're gonna to need your extra strong thread too for your sewing if you're going to be doing a bit of hand sewing. So with your right sides together, you can match your marks at the top there. And we're going to sew a four millimeter seam allowance from the base of the front here, all the way up around and down to the base of the tail there. And do keep that to four millimeters. You don't want it smaller than that. And I do sew that two times because we're gonna be turning it through and packing that really firm. I do like to overcast that first with a tacking stitch so that it all stays into place when I sew on the machine. I have my machine uh, set up with a jeans needle. I always sew with a jeans needle with felt and I have my stitch length set to number two using a normal all-purpose polyester thread. So let's get started and get this first seam done. So this is how your side body pieces should look all stitched up. Now, if you did sew an overcasting stitch, just remove those overcasting stitches just a little way up the front and from the back end of the tail because we want to be able to open up those seams open and flat. So now we just need to turn this one through. Best way to do it is to use your forceps and to go ahead and work that section through. That's the little head that will be folded over. Push that one all the way through and you want to roll out those seams. Get your knitting needle up in there to really make sure, especially in that head area, in that neck area, everything is pushed out well. And then you can just go ahead and roll out those seams. 
all the way down that back for a nice rounded finish to your seams. When we get to the back here, we're going to open out this seam at the back and you'll see as you open up the seam, because this is a point, you've got two little bunny ears there. We're going to take those off because our next job is to add our base piece. But before we do that, you've actually got a mark, a line on your body pattern template that shows you where we're going to stitch across and we're going to do that now. So just use a matching thread. Again, check your pattern template for where that is and we just stitch straight across two times so that we're then going to be able to stuff up to that point and fold this section over for his little head. So now we're going to pin in our body base. So we're going to put our right side of our base facing outwards. We're not turning this through. So we're actually putting wrong sides together here. You're going to match up your center mark with that center front seam, which we've opened out nice and flat. It's important here to get everything lined up because we're going to be sewing a blanket stitch. So we want to cover those raw edges and you want to make sure that that's in the exact right position. So I'm just gonna take a pin straight through the center mark and the center seam there. And just to anchor that in, then we're gonna do exactly the same thing at the base. Flatten that one out and match that up. Go back to the front and I'm going to pin it in all the way around. Pin through all the layers, flip it over and just take up some on the other side and put your pin head all the way down. That's going to clamp it into place. It's the best way to pin anything three dimensional like this. Travel over to the other side and do exactly the same thing. You'll find the base piece will fit beautifully so long as you've kept to your seam allowances. So you're wanting to have everything lined up. You can see that's coming in. And you're gonna have a nice flat surface. It's almost going to be a little bit concave, which is good, because we wanna keep this whole base nice and flat. So I'm gonna continue pinning in right the way around, and then we'll come back and we'll sew that blanket stitch. So there you go, that base is all pinned in. I've got my pearl thread ready, a single strand with a knot in the end, a very long thread, because I don't want to run out. So on your pattern pieces, your side body pieces, you'll find that there's two marks that mark an opening. So, and you'll have it on both sides. We only leave an opening on one side. You can choose either, it doesn't matter. Um, and you can start wherever you want, but it needs to be at the beginning of one of those openings. You can see that mine is there. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a knot in the end. I'm just going to go in and come out between the layers of that interfacing and that felt on one side. I'm gonna make absolutely certain that those edges are lined up. I'm actually going to take my stitches a little deeper. I'm gonna make them five millimeters because we want to create a little effect all the way around the edge of this snail that's like a little ruffly sort of a look. And if that seam is just a little bit bigger, it's just a better effect. So I'm gonna really anchor in that first stitch. And I'm just going to continue on. Now I'm gonna put a video link at the top of your screen there to my tutorial on how to sew a blanket stitch if you haven't sewn one before. But it is quite straightforward. 
I'll show you a couple of stitches here. You do have to work around your pins. And each time you can see I'm making sure everything's lined up. So blanket stitch is you're going in through all of the layers and you're pulling your needle out through your thread loop. And that gives you a little stitch that goes across the top and down. You want to make sure it's all nice and snug. So in doing this, we're going to be covering our raw edges and creating a lovely flat finish around the whole base of this nail. Take your time to make sure everything's lined up. Keep your stitches nice and even. And you can see that beautiful effect and it's going to hold everything together really well. So I'm going to make my way around the base, the back there, right the way around the front until I get to the other mark here which is the other side of that opening that can, you can see just there. And that's where I'll finish off because we need to be able to stuff the snail through there and then we will just finish off with more blanket stitching. So that has all my blanket stitching done and right the way around the edge and I've got that opening there at the front. So I've actually left my needle and my thread on because I'm going to finish closing up there after I filled it. Now stuffing this one, we're going to pack this whole top neck section really nice and firm through that opening. Forceps are best for this to take your stuffing up right up into that neck section. You really want to fill this out firm at the base where you stitched across there because it's just going to hold that little head out too. So you can see I'm just working that filling up in there because we've sewn it twice it's nice and strong. And I'm going to keep on packing that in. And see as we fold that over we're going to have a nice amount of lift there at the front of that face there. So I'm going to keep packing that in that firm right down to here. Once I get that packed in and we get down to this point I'm going to show you how to pack out the back end keeping it all nice and flat. So once you have this whole neck section filled my best advice to you for keeping this lower section flat. So what we're aiming for is this section here is filled but it's as flat as possible. So it will lift up at the front a little, that's good, that's what we want. But the best way to make that happen without creating just a ball out here, first of all always remember when you're stuffing you're creating a shape, you're not just filling a space. So always be mindful of the shape that you're creating. So what I do is I keep it flat on my tabletop and I fill from side to side. So I'm not actually taking the filling in the centre. I'm going to take it from side to side all the way down. And that way we're going to have a natural flat finish. So now I'll work over to that side tuck it all in. Make sure that you're really pushing out all of these seams because that's my design shape for you and really push out into the front here and as you continue on you can be adding more filling up through here because we want this section to be completely rounded and nicely filled out. We're going to need it to be very firm because we're pulling all of those shell pieces through to the base. So just taking your stuffing and adding it side to side all the way down until you get to the base. So that has my snail body all filled out and you can see so not too much filling back here. We've kept these lines all nice and smooth. It's really filled out here and at the front there 
but the overall body base is kept nice and flat. So you can use your wool felting needle to tuck everything in there nicely. And if you do feel like it's it's too curved at the base here, you could always felt straight through to flatten that out. What will happen is we will add our button at the base there to pull all of those shell pieces through and that's going to pull everything down and that's how the design works. So now if you still have that thread attached, you can go ahead and finish closing that opening with your blanket stitch. So that completes our body and we will do the finishing of the head and those little eye stalks at the end. Um, and when you pop him down, don't worry, he'll lean forward. When we add that shell, it's going to balance that all out. So we can pop that body aside for now and let's make the shell pieces, which are really simple. So first of all, with each of these, we're going to put right sides together, line those up, those circles, and we're just going to sew around the outside edge with a nice small seam allowance, just about no bigger than four millimetres, three, meter, three millimetres if you can manage it, right around that edge so we have a nice small seam on each of those. You don't need to sew it twice, but do make sure that your machine stitch is nice and small. So I've turned each of those circles through and we've got our little donut shapes and I've gone ahead and really pushed out those seams again and rolled them out. So we've got our three circles. Our next step I've done on each of them and I'm going to show you with the larger one. You just take a doubled strand of your extra strong thread and sew a little close running stitch all the way around that inside circle. Leave your tail ends hanging because we're going to be tying it off. So you can see there, I've still got my needle on with that one, which I can actually take off. And I've done that with each circle, even the tiny one. So with these two here, the largest and the middle sized, we're going to just fill those and the best way to do it, I've tied a preliminary knot there. The best way to fill these is from the center and fill out the whole outside edge. And it does need to be quite firm, but you can only get it so firm because of the way that it's made with that hole in the center. Um, but this is where your pins are going to go. If you're using it as a pin cushion, You'll need it to be firm enough to hold your pins. So fill out the whole outside edge first. So that has the outside of my little donut shape all filled nice and evenly all around the edge. Now there's, it's nice and firm, but it's still quite squishy. So you can see in this middle section there, it's not packed quite as firm. So I've got, I can pick up those threads now and what I'm going to do is just pull them in a little. So not all the way into the center by any means. You can adjust all of your filling. So I'm gonna leave a little space there. It's probably about 25 millimeters and I'm gonna knot that off about three times and snip those thread ends. So that has that tied in. So it's pulled in just a little bit. And what that does is it gives us a little bit of gathering there. And the edge there, if you've got the, the little gathering and the puckering, that's exactly what we want. That just gives a nice shape. Um, you're never going to put two circles flat together and stuff them and not have puckering on the edge, but it's actually what we're going for in this case. So that's the largest one. We're going to do exactly the same thing with the medium one. Remember that they're stacked on top of each other, so we're not going to see that stuffing. It's gonna be squished down like that. So this next one, we're gonna pull in the same amount, just a little bit after filling it. But the top one, we're going to fill it. And then when we pull these in, we're gonna pull it in nice and tight, almost to the center because we're only having a button covering that top section. So it needs to be pulled in enough. And remember, we're going to be putting some pressure 
on that one. So do make sure it's knotted off and it's quite tight. So I'm gonna get the other two done and then you can see how they look. So now we've got all our shell pieces done and you can see that fine little top one pulled in right all the way at the top there, just enough room for that button shank. So let's put this one together, it's very easy. The first thing we're going to do is take a doubled strand of extra strong thread, a really long doubled strand, pass it through your needle and bring it down and double it up. So then we've got four strands. I like to knot the end so we don't lose all of those strands in the process. And we're going to start with the underside of our body. We've got a mark there and we're going to come in through the button first. I'm using a four hole button, but we don't need all four holes. We're just gonna be using the two holes there. You can use either. And I'm going to start just one side of that mark. Just remember as you're going through to stay on that side. Basically your needle goes through straight up. You could put a pin there to mark so that you know, but that's basically where it goes. Just follow the line straight up. Pull that one through. We're gonna let that button sit there at the base. Then we're gonna take our first shell piece and we're going to come in on one side of that mark, the center mark, and straight through the center. Pull that all the way through. We're going to do the same on the medium sized one. Straight through the center and then on the little one. And straight through the top there. Pull those all the way through. Now we're going to take our top button and pass through that shank. I actually hate shank buttons, but every now and then they are perfect for a project and this is why I keep some around. So through the shank button, or you may just have a normal button, you've gone through both the holes. Then we're going to go through and we're gonna travel back down the same journey, but on the opposite side of our marks. So straight through the center each time, coming out other side. Pulling on those threads, our final one, we're going to go in the opposite side. We're going to come out the other side of that mark on the base. and through the button on the opposite side. So now we've got everything connected. What you need to do now is hold on to those thread ends and make sure that you don't have any of these twisted. You don't want those twisting, so they've got to be going the right way and make sure that all your threads are pulled right too. You want to pull on them independently as well. So checking that they're all going through straight. Once you've done that, it's just a matter of positioning those exactly how you want them then we're really going to compress it all. Tie off those ends. around your button, keep compressing, tightening that up and you see straight away how your little snail is sitting up now because it's nice and flat on the base because that button has pulled it up. 
you can see what a great finish that top button is. But I do like mine really pulled down. I have to do this off camera because I've got to hold it on my lap and hold that button tight. But once that is all held in place, nice and tight, I will knot that off at least four times before I snip those thread ends. So there we have our, our snail's shell added. And isn't that just a fabulous effect? It's just the easiest way to apply it. So incredible for pins and plenty of room. Now our next step and our final step, well final step for me, is that we're going to add those little eyes on their stalks there. Now I said that you can wrap those bobby pins if you like. I'm just gonna show you quickly how I go about doing that. First of all, if you're going to be using a bobby pin, you're going to want to take the end of that bobby pin and you want to bend it inwards because we need just enough to tuck in underneath that fold there. So first up, that's what we're going to do. And then I'm just gonna quickly show you, if you want to wrap them, just add a little bit of clear craft glue on the end of that bend. I'll show you in a lighter thread so it's just a bit easier for you to see. Start on your glued end and just start wrapping with your thread. And I'm using pearl thread. You only need glue on the start. Keeping it all nice and tight. Change your positioning as you go. And you just wrap. The good thing about this is you can use any coloured thread you like, which is really awesome, especially if you're making some really bright colours. So I would just make my way all the way up to the end here. And then I travel all the way back down again. So I wrap back over it again. And then I come up halfway again and then back again. And I finish off down here in the same way. And then I end up with that little bit overhanging. So you can see, push you out the way. You can see that by wrapping over itself halfway up, you get a bit thicker on the base. So then I've gone ahead and I've just taken a soft brush and some of my gloss gel medium and painted over those stitches. You don't have to do that. It will hold beautifully well as it is, but that's just a, a little extra thing you can do if you like. Of course, you can just use the bobby pins as they are. And as I said, Anything else that you come up with as far as some wire, a couple of beads on the end, you can do that as well. You might be making something that's really highly decorated and it will look actually beautiful with a fully beaded um, eye stalk. Mine, I'm giving you, as always, I'm giving you a basic pattern that is absolutely foolproof and you can do anything you like to it. So what I'm going to do now before I sew this front face section down, is I'm going to just take this to my hot glue gun and I'm going to hot glue both of those in place right on that fold line underneath so that they're nice and even and they will be sitting up like that. So you can see that has my eye stalks in place. They're hot glued underneath there. Our last step is just to stitch down the front of that face. Now, I don't add any facial features um, because snails don't have them. They do have a mouth on the underside here. You could, if you wanted to, the way that we're going to actually stitch this into place is we're going to come in from behind here with our needle. I've got a double strand of extra strong thread. I'm going to come in from behind, pass that needle right the way through to the front leave my tail ends hanging and I'm just going to take a stitch across the base here. So just straight across on the underside. Then I'm going to go back in the other side and come out at the back here and knot it off and that's going to pull it in. If you wanted to create a little smile, you could take this needle with a, the appropriate coloured thread and go all the way through to the front make a stitch across to give a little mouth. That's just not the look I'm going for, but by all means, go ahead and do that if you want to. 
but I really just want to pull that in and I only want to pull in the base layer because if I do that, I get a fuller face at the front there. So I'm gonna go back in, come out at the back again, right through that same entry hole. A bit hard to see because I'm using all the same thread colors, but I can pull on both those threads and I can tie that off and just knot it off. And you can see how the little face is just, it's not plastered to the, to the neck there. It's just pulled in, curved over nicely and it's gonna hold those little eye stalks in place. So I'm gonna get that knotted off. So there we go, that completes my beautiful little snail. So that's it in its absolute most basic form. And you can add any kind of embellishment you like. Now you can imagine it made up in all of your bright pop-up style, pop art style colors. You can make it incredibly primitive and neutral with all of your neutrals and keep some of those fabrics quite frayed and worn. That would look absolutely amazing. You could do some incredible primitive embroidery stitching on it. You could make it up in shabby chic colors style with florals and put little bows on. You could add a little bow tie. I'm thinking about a little bow tie there. I think that would look super sweet because he doesn't actually have face features that sort of just brings in a little bit of character there. So I may add that and I've also just added, I've just added a couple to some very long pins, a couple of beautiful little flowers, and they can just sit in the top there, which makes it all very earthy and natural. Just a really pretty little finish there. Of course, all of your pins, look at all the room for pins. It's quite amazing. It's actually a really lovely, stable pin cushion. I like a big pin cushion, so I don't want to be hunting for it. So. I just think all of you people who sell online and have your online stores and your markets, this is an incredible one to make because it's, it's, a, it's a racing snail, isn't it? Because it is just so quick to make, but be an incredible seller. And by the way, you're most welcome to make any product from my patterns and sell them. Um, you just can't sell the pattern itself. It's uh, just another way that I can pay it forward to you all. So I hope you've really enjoyed it. I can't wait to see all of your colors and styles and embellishments. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. So I've added that bow tie and I do like that result. So I, I'm really excited to see how you embellish yours and all the different ways you go about putting them together. I would love to see them on our Facebook page. So if you haven't joined our Facebook page, come along and join us. You'll be able to share anything you've made with my patterns on that page. You'll get heaps of encouragement, lots of positive feedback um, and lots of people there. Um, I've got some fantastic helpers there who will jump in and help you. I'm there whenever I can be there. Big shout out to Alison for keeping it all going for us. Thank you, Alison. Um, and we really love seeing your work. So come along. If you want to step up and you want to do some more advanced work, of course, you may have heard of my masterclass where we make some more technical and more advanced patterns, soft sculpture. We really go from craft and jumping into art when we go into masterclass. And it is a fantastic group of people there too. And we're seeing on that Facebook page, if you want to see the results, have a look there, some incredible creations coming and some really amazing styles. I can see some real artwork coming along and uh, people developing their own style. It's really, really exciting. And that is what Masterclass is all about. So I'll put that link down below too. You can join anytime you want to chat to me, by all means, chat to me in the comments. Um, we're gonna be adding to this pin cushion collection. I'm into it now. I really love this one. I've got more um, coming up ahead. Chat to me in the comments. Tell me what you'd like to see right here on Pay It Forward for free and uh, I will do my best to accommodate you all. And in the meantime, if you want to chat to me in person, best way to catch me is on Instagram. So there is my Instagram account. Along there, you'll be able to catch up with me. You can private message me there, no problems at all. I will do my best to help you out. I just love to hear from you all. I chat to so many of you on there now 
and I love it. Thank you all for joining me there. So everybody, have a fantastic creative week. Everybody stay safe and keep on paying all of those good things forward. Until next time, it is Huru from me.